Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Paul, and in this Regime to the Com video, we're going to be analysing the Ryzen 5 1600X, more specifically a benchmark which has appeared on the internet. Now, we have already discussed some benchmarks, but this is a different one. This is from CPU-Z. There are an awful lot of people who have messaged me concerning this, and I probably am going to miss a few out, but in no particular order, Curtis, Eugene, Rod, Henrik, Brian, uh, Charisse, and also there was, I believe, Yelaz via email, and there may have been another individual as well, and if there is, I apologise, because I've probably forgotten one or two other people. Anyway, um, I don't want to attribute one person to one specific piece of news because an awful lot of you have been messaging me different aspects of this story and also kind of going through with me on Facebook kind of uh, throwing bits of information uh, between ourselves and it's quite interesting actually some of the results. So first of all what are the results because that probably makes more sense. So first of all we have a CPU Z screenshot. Now obviously there is a small possibility I have some possibility that these are fake. We do know that Ryzen CPUs are starting to go out to select benchmarkers, um, not everyone. And we suspect it's probably going to be later part of the month that they're more publicly available. Um, from what we understand, you know, very early March is when we're going to actually be able to buy the processors readily. So obviously over the next couple of weeks, you're going to start seeing more of these come out. But, you know, so... Just so we're all clear, the AMD K17 is the processor's name. Summit Ridge and naturally is built on the 14nm process. Now, ignore the core voltage because obviously it's not probably under load at that particular moment. But one can quite clearly see that it is Ryzen based and it is a 6 core 12 thread processor thanks to SMT. None of that is particularly new news, but it's nice to have all of this confirmed. Um, and actually, Eugene uh, uh, actually pointed out that some of this stuff appeared originally on a Chinese forum, and then basically it continued on and on and on from there, and that's where people have grabbed it. So he actually gave me some of the original screenshots, which is quite nice of him. Anywho, I'm really hoping I'm pronouncing his name wrong. If, it, if I'm not, if I am pronouncing your name incorrectly, do pull me up on it in Facebook message, please, because it's kind of disrespectful if I'm... Uh, calling you, you know, by the incorrect pronunciation. Anyway, so the performance data that we have for this CPU obviously is only one reference point. We have a single and we have a multi-core score. So the first one is 1688, while the other one, excuse me, I just said 1688, I mean 1888. That was completely factually incorrect. I apologize. 1888. Whereas the multi-thread performance of the processor is 12,544, which is obviously a lot more impressive. But then again, this is a six core 12 thread CPU. Now, for the purposes of analysis, we have a couple of reference points. One reference point is a 4770K. Now, the reason I'm starting with that one is because it's a bit of an older architecture. Plus as well, it's one of my work PCs, so it's not very difficult for me to fire this up. For your reference, this is with stock clocks, uh, and the memory is also uh, not particularly great. It's running at, I believe, 2133 uh, in this particular instance. Anywho, aside from that, the benchmarks are with single thread 1527, whereas the multi-thread 6573. Full disclosure, there were a couple of background apps running simultaneously. For example, I had Firefox and I had Steam, which I could not close because I'm downloading stuff. So let's add 5 to 10% of those on, onto those scores if you so desire. That's totally up to you. I also have a couple of 6700K machines, uh, which are sitting next to me. One is a test machine, which I can't talk about too much. And one is a machine that I've built for RGT specifically. So let's talk about the RGT machine. Um, obviously, all these results are on screen anyway. But um, the single performance, uh, by the way, just so you're clear, this is with the 6700K overclocked. So it's running at 4.6 gigahertz. It's not a particularly massive overclock. Uh, I did it deliberately just so it's a titchy bit over Kaby Lake. So um, the 7700K. 
So the single thread performance is 2309, whereas the multi-thread just inches past the 10,000 mark at 10,027. Default clock of the same CPU, 6700K, you're looking at 2108, while unsurprisingly, multi-thread also goes down to about 9,000, well, 9,058 to be exact, which is still pretty reasonable when you factor things in. As I've mentioned, a dozen times over by now we have multiple other benchmark scores for example we've discussed 3d mark fire strike physics scores which normally you would just say yeah yeah ah, ah, run away run away physics scores you know you would disable them if your benchmark and graphics can't but for cpu side things it's quite interesting and essentially the cpu is about on par with the 6800k now there are one other benchmark there is one other benchmark rather that makes more sense doesn't it which is very interesting. Uh, another user has pulled this one over to me, Curtis, and he found this a slightly overclocked 6800K, which is once again a six core, uh, 12 thread CPU. Now, the beauty of this particular processor, uh, sorry, benchmark, is that we have, of course, the single thread performance and the multi thread performance. Multi thread is 12,405, single thread is 2,071. To put that into some level of context, the default performance of this processor around 10,300, the 6800K once again with single, or sorry, with multi-thread performance, whereas the single thread performance is going to be around the 17,800 mark. I say around because obviously, you know, it's going to depend on memory timings and all of that crap. So what, now we've talked about all this uh, stuff for the past like five or whatever minutes, I don't even know how long the video is at this point. What, I'm, what is my analysis? Well, first of all, it's pretty obvious that single thread performance of Ryzen isn't quite up to the level of, let's say, Skylake. I say Skylake because ostensibly Skylake and Cable Lake are the same CPU. Obviously, they've got a few AVX bits and pieces, but basically the same CPU. So if you're running at the same clock speed for this benchmark, and I stress that word, this benchmark, Ryzen is slower. What Ryzen is faster with, however, is just sheer core count. It's not making up in clock, it's making up on pure volume of threads. Um, so there's a couple of final thoughts I have with this. Tasty, tasty, delicious thoughts. We are making a couple of assumptions. First of all, we're making the assumption that this isn't fake, but let's ignore that. Let's pretend that they are real, because obviously you can't do an analysis. Let's assume it's real. The other questions we have is, well, was turbo enabled, disabled? If assuming it is enabled, then it's probably boosting to about 3.7 gigahertz plus. Obviously, it does depend upon the cooler that is attached, and that's another question we have. The final thing um, that we need to remember is the price. Yes, I know, I know, I know, I know. We've bought a price about a billion times before with this particular set of hardware. But really, it's like, dude, the CPU is $260, assuming that the price is once again accurate. I know I keep saying assuming, but I don't want to, you know, get you all excited and think that it's official. 260 bucks for a fucking 6-core 12 thread processor. I'm sorry for the language, but just bloody hell. Even if you say that the results of single thread are a little behind Skylake, right? It's really impressive. Um, and AMD have outdone themselves. This leads us to the final set of questions that I have for you all. First of all, are you impressed with the single thread and multi-thread performance? Like, let's say it was... I'm going to assume 5% slower than Skylake, 10% slower on average per benchmark. Would that be okay with you if you're going more multi-thread? Second question is like overclocking. Let's assume that this CPU is 3.7 gigahertz as a standard. What would you expect it to overclock? What would you like it to overclock to? And with what solution? So what would you like it to overclock with like on a decent air cooler? In other words, not, you know, someone strapping a fan to you know a piece of metal basically we're talking like a really high-end air cooler a decent aio and a decent water cooling loop what would you expect personally for an aio i would be pretty and uh, you know a decent aio i would expect something around 4.2 if it hit 4.2 4.4 
I don't think 4.4, but realistically 4.2 for something like a 1600X with this amount of threads at that price with a decent motherboard, I'm sold. I'm done. Like that, that, that's, it's very hard for me to argue with that. Once again, and I know I'm going to sound like a broken record, but assuming these benchmarks are accurate for all of the leaks we've seen, and once again, assuming these prices are accurate. Anyway, hopefully you've enjoyed the video. I'll see you soon. Take care of yourselves. Bye for now.